Mr. Klein here with our second of two lessons on light. In our last lesson, we talked about color. In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about light and optics. Uh, we're going to talk about mirrors, lenses, and stuff like that. It's a lot of compressed information, so you really need to pay close attention to this lesson in order to get everything. So let's go ahead and let's get started. This poor lady, she's like all stretched out and all, all pulled apart. What happened to her? Well, in case you wanted to know, she's actually just fine. Rather, this image we're getting of her comes from a funhouse mirror, uh, which is a mirror which is bent in and curves uh, inward and outward in order to give us a distorted image of what the person is actually like. And why this happens is what we're going to talk about in this lesson when we talk about mirrors and lenses and the general the concept called optics. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, when we see waves of light, it's usually quite bright. I mean, have you ever shined a flashlight in your eyes? It, it's kind of bright. We see the world around us mainly due to light interacting with matter, okay? In our last lesson on color, what we talked about was how different wavelengths of light had different colors, and we see them because they reflect off. Now, when waves of light hit matter, light can do one of three things to it. First off, light waves can bounce off of matter and go elsewhere. This is what we call reflection, okay? Light bouncing off, it reflects. After all, a red fire truck looks red because our, the red light reflects off the paint in the fire truck and hits our eyes, and we're able to see that, okay? That's reflection. Seems pretty easy. Light waves can also go through matter. This is what we call the transmission of light. When light transmits through matter, it can either spread out through scattering or be bent through refraction, okay? Or it can just go straight through, depending on how clear the object is. Finally, light waves can also be absorbed or have the energy from the light wave transferred to the matter it hits. In other words, light uh, hits the object and doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't pass through or doesn't even bounce off. Okay? Usually this energy changes from electromagnetic to thermal energy. That's why shining a light on an object, it gets warm over time. Now you might be saying, Mr. Klein, I don't quite understand. I need pictures. Well, here you go. Okay? So we have absorption, which is where... Uh, the light beam hits, okay, and the energy is absorbed. It's, it's trapped by the object and it doesn't escape. Transmission is when it goes through from one medium to the other. It could change its direction. It could bend the light. It could do whatever. And finally, we have reflection. That's when light bounces off. So it can either be stopped, go through, or bounce off. It's one of the three ways it can do it. Now, what we're going to be focusing on is transmission and reflection and how light deals with that. Okay, and so let's go ahead and let's look at reflection and how we use reflection in this part of the lesson. As was stated above, reflection is when light bounces off of a surface. The light going to the surface is what we call the incident ray, and the light bouncing off of the surface is what we call the reflected ray. There are two types of reflection, and it has to do with what incident and reflected rays do to each other once they uh, hit an object. If you have a perfectly smooth surface, the incident and reflected rays don't collide. They just bounce off nice and simple. Okay, It's a perfect reflection of the image you see. This is what we call regular reflection. Now, this is only when the object is perfectly smooth. On a surface that isn't smooth, on the other hand, rays tend to collide. And what they do is they bounce into each other and it creates a blurry image. This is what we call diffuse reflection because the image isn't... Uh, the, the rays of light don't just go nice and clear. They bounce into each other and it diffuses the picture. So this is regular reflection on the left-hand side. Your incident rays and your reflected rays, perfectly smooth, all bounce off of each other. Okay, Diffuse reflection, as you can see, the surface isn't smooth. It's all kind of bouncy and stuff. And what you notice is you actually have images and you have the, the rays of light actually bouncing into each other. When it does, it kind of clouds up the image. A good example of diffuse reflection would be you, you looking at the surface of a pond and it's nice and clear and nice and smooth. Well, what happens when you throw a rock into it and it bounces, it, it splashes into the water and the waves are rippling, the, the image gets all distorted. That's diffuse reflection in action. Now, go ahead and create your graphic organizer. Let me give you a couple minutes in order to fill this out and create this because you're going to have a lot of drawing and stuff. But let's define reflection. It's right, light rays bouncing off of a surface. So I'm going to give you a second to do that. And there we go. Okay, so we got all that. Finally, whether ref regular diffuse reflection occurs, 
the same law it applies. The light rays always reflect at equal angles to each other. This is known as the law of reflection. In other words, if light comes in on a surface at 60 degrees, it's going to bounce off at 60 degrees. Okay, and you can see this in this image where we talk about the law of reflection, when the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are the same. Okay, you see that the angles of the two objects are the same whenever it hits a mirror. Okay, so we got that. Now what I want you to do is I want you to look at this image and I want you to draw it in your drawing space. Okay, you don't have to have all of the pictures, all the details. Just make sure you have the surface, the incident ray, and the reflected ray, and then show that the angles are the same for both. So go ahead and draw that. And here we go. Now, mirrors. When we think of reflection, we usually think of mirrors. And that's good because mirrors use reflection. Mirrors are objects that create an image through reflected light. The image created by the mirror can be considered to be either real or virtual. And this is kind of a complicated concept, but at the same time, it's actually very simple. And here's why. Real images are those created when light waves actually meet. In other words, they bounce off of the surface and they come and they meet at a, the light rays meet at a particular point. And that's where the image forms. When it forms there, that's the real image. Virtual images, on the other hand, are when light waves seem to meet behind the mirror, okay, to our eyes and our brain, but they don't actually meet. They're kind of like imaginary where they meet, hence the term virtual, meaning not real. And you might be saying to yourself, Mr. Klein, I don't understand. Well, it's a good thing I have this picture right here. So we have a mirror, okay? As you can see, the green light, okay, bounces off and it creates the real image. The image is formed in front of the mirror, okay? It, and it forms because of light rays bouncing and meeting at a certain point. The virtual image is on the back side of the mirror. To us, it looks like it actually meets, but it actually doesn't. It, it's kind of what our brain kind of pieces together out of it, hence the term virtual image. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the three classes of mirrors. And you're just going to say, Mr. Klein, this is a complete and total wall of text. You're right. But I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can. And for our purposes in class, we're just being very simple with it. We're not going into like the angles of reflection and things like that. We just need to know what they are and how they work. The first type are plane mirrors. Plane mirrors have a flat plane. And they're flat surfaces where virtual images are created. When at your mirror in your bathroom, that's a plane mirror, okay? The image created by the mirror is the same size as the object pictured in real life, but the sides are reversed. So left becomes right, right becomes left, top, you know, vice versa. So let's look at a plane mirror example, okay? So we have the object on one side of the mirror. As you can see, the light rays never meet, okay, in order to form the image. As a result, the image is virtual. It's on the back side of the mirror, okay? It's the same size. It's just that left and right are reversed. And as we can see with this example, yo, dog, my G, homie, I'm down with it. He's, he's kind of down with, yeah, I'll just move on. Um, so let's go ahead and let's draw this, okay? Um, make sure you draw the mirror, the object, and the image on both sides. And use dotted lines just to kind of show that the image is virtual, okay? So I'm going to give you a second to draw that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about convex mirrors. Convex mirrors are mirrors that curve outward, okay? They create virtual images that are always upright and smaller than the actual object. Rear view mirrors on cars are uh, convex mirrors, not concave, excuse the typo, okay? If we look at this, convex mirrors, okay, it curves outward. You've seen mirrors like this. This is a parking garage. What happens is it's just like a plane mirror. The image looks like it's inside the mirror, okay? And it gives you a wider field of view because the image is compressed and it's smaller, okay? So as we can see with this convex mirror, make sure you, spoiler alert, you're going to have to draw this, so you might want to start drawing it now. Your convex mirror curves outward, and it bounces all the rays outward, and none of them really cross into each other. So what ends up happening is it's kind of like a plane mirror. You have a virtual image. It's upright, just like a plane mirror, but the image size is reduced. It's smaller, okay? So go ahead and make sure this is drawn in this box. And let's talk about concave mirrors. Concave mirrors are surfaces that curve inward, like a bowl, hence the term cave. It goes inward. They're creating images that can be either real or virtual depending on where the object is located, okay? And here comes an important point. The object is further away from the mirror than what we call the focal point. The focal point is where light waves actually meet, okay? The image will be real, smaller, 
and upside down compared to the actual object. So if it's back behind the focal point, the focal point's kind of where all the light rays will meet, uh, you'll look at that. Now, if it's closer than the focal point, the image will be virtual, larger, and right side up, kind of like a... Con uh, Kind of like a combination of a plane mirror and a convex mirror. So let's look at some examples since you're all probably confused. Okay, so the focal point, as you can see on the image on the left, that's where the light rays all kind of meet. And uh, the focal point, usually you can see it on a concave mirror when you bring an image up to it. It's where the, the image kind of goes blurry for a second and then clears out. Okay, so if our object is behind the focal point, what you'll have is the real image and it's reflected, okay, and it's upside down and smaller. But whenever we go inside the focal point, then it's really zoomed in. Cosmetic mirrors oftentimes will have concave mirrors with uh, focal points that are further back to allow you to get up close and it allows you to zoom in and see uh, close to your skin, okay? And now the object, of course, is going to be larger, so it's magnified and it's right side up, which allows you to see it perfectly. But the image, because it's on the back of the mirror, is virtual okay so here's an example of two con images from concave mirrors in, a, in comparison with a convex mirror so the first one is behind the focal point okay as you can see the image is upside down okay the second image the image in the middle it's in front of the focal point as you can see it's right side up and it's bigger okay and if you look everything behind the focal point is upside down whereas you can see a convex mirror on the other side, uh, everything's just all kind of zoomed out. So there you go. Let's go ahead and let's draw those concave mirrors. Okay, in front of the focal point, it's, uh, the image is larger. It's behind the mirror and it's virtual. Whereas if it's behind the focal point, it's smaller, upside down, and real. Okay, so you should by now have this column completed. So let's go on to the next section, refraction. The speed of light, of course, is constant in a vacuum, but its speed changes when going through objects. When light waves go from one medium to another, the light waves will slow down or speed up. It kind of depends on what we call the refraction index. Okay, uh, the more clear the medium is, the faster it will go. The thicker or more matter in the way, the more it will uh, bend light. Now, if the light goes into the new medium at an angle, it will bend or refract. The greater the change in speed, the greater the refraction and the greater the angle. So if we look at a prism, Okay, you can see this. Okay, light goes through, and because glass is actually bending the uh, light, the white light, it bends it into the colors, which is where we saw from our last lesson. And of course, whenever we go through, it goes back into the uh, air. Okay, it bends it again. So here's our example of uh, rays of light going through a glass. Okay, goes at an angle, bends in the glass, and then it bends back once it gets back to the air. And let's go ahead and let's draw that in our box. Okay, so just like we have mirrors that use reflection, refraction, we bend light through lenses, okay? Yours truly, Mr. Klein, wears glasses, okay? A lot of you wear glasses. That's because it helps us, helps us correct problems with focusing in our vision, which we'll see in a lab on this. Now, we commonly use refraction to help us create images through lenses. Like mirrors, there's convex and concave, and they also make real and virtual images, but do so kind of like the opposite of mirrors, if you will. So let's go ahead and let's look at this wall of text. Okay, convex lenses are the opposite of what we think of convex mirrors, okay? There are surfaces that curve outward, meaning that they're thicker in the middle than they are at the edges. Okay, this calls, causes the light waves to meet at the focal point. And depending on the object is located, the image can be either real or virtual, just like concave mirrors. And the same uh, process applies. If the object is further away from the lens and the focal point, remember that's where the light waves meet, a real image is upside down, formed on the other side of the lens, but its size depends on the distance from the focal point. If the object is closer, a virtual image forms on the same side, and the image is always right side up and larger. So when we look at these examples, okay, if you're in front of the focal point on a convex lens, it kind of appears behind the object. It sounds weird, but it makes sense whenever you see it, and we'll look at that in class. Uh, the further away, the further away the object is in a convex lens, the more it shrunk down. Okay, so the closer it gets to the focal point, the bigger it is. The further away, the smaller it gets in the lens. And we can see a, how a convex lens works in this picture right here. 
Okay, so the beams of light go in. You can see it's a convex lens because it curves outward in the middle. And the focal point is where the beams of light all kind of meet. Okay, so there you go. That's the example right there. And let's go ahead and let's draw our convex lenses uh, if it's in front of or behind the focal point. And we're almost done here, so hang on with me. Finally, let's talk about concave lenses. These are surfaces that curve inward like a cave, okay? In other words, they're thicker at the edges than in the middle. This causes the light waves to spread apart. As a result, the image created is always virtual because the light rays, remember, never meet. Real images are where light rays meet. Virtual is where our eyes say they kind of meet. In addition, the image created by the lens is smaller and right side up compared to the actual object. Cameras use concave image, images to capture lenses and images, and the combination of lenses is what allows us to zoom in or out. Okay, so here's an example of a concave lens. As you can see, the light rays all spread out from a hit. Now, there is a focal point, okay, but the image is real. I'm sorry, it's virtual because it's not create, it's not the light rays don't actually meet. And what we have right here is an example of. A concave lens as you can see light hits and it spreads out none of the light rays actually meet like they did before okay as a result the image whatever forms is going to be virtual okay so let's go ahead and let's finally fill out our box I know this was a lot of information and it kind of needs some practical information for us to go and for my class our text review I'm really making sure you know like what kind of images are created that's the important thing Okay, light interacts with matter in three ways. One, it can be absorbed. It means it just stops going. It can reflect or bounce off the surface. We use mirrors in order to take advantage of this reflection. Plain mirrors are just flat surfaces where light bounces off and we create virtual images. Convex mirrors are images, uh, are mirrors rather that are curved outward. They create virtual images that are always smaller. Concave mirrors are mirrors that are curved on the inside. And depending on how closer how far you away from the mirror uh, is what kind of images it can create it. It can be either real or virtual, all depending on where it's at. Refraction, of course, is when light rays are bending as it passes through a surface, okay? We use lenses for that purpose. Convex images, convex len lenses can create images that are real or virtual depending on where it's placed compared to the object. And concave images, lenses, create images that are always virtual and they are lenses where it is thinner in the middle. Okay, so there you go. That's your lesson. Hope you understand it. We're going to do some labs. We're going to do some activities in class to help you understand it. And if, as always, you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.